Hi everyone, it's been a long time since my last video. The world has changed dramatically. I hope you are safe and sound no matter where you are. A lot also has happened to me. I went to Australia last year for an exchange study. Now I came back to Cologne. I just finished my thesis presentation and now I have two bachelors and one master's degree. And I have also studied in China, America, Germany, and Australia. Uh, I guess I'm probably kind of too nerdy. Uh, but anyway, I think it might be a good idea to also share my experience because I know some of you are debating which country you want to go study. So if you're deciding between those countries, probably I can give you some advice. Uh, but please note that I studied in um, Boston, Cologne and Sydney. Uh, those cities don't represent the entire country. So just take my advice as a little reference. But I still hope that's helpful. So yeah, let's get it started. <music> Enrollment is definitely not the end of the game, but actually the beginning of a battle. So let's talk about all the paperwork and you have to do before and after your arrival in that country. First, United States. I had to apply for F1 student visa about 10 years ago, and that was my first time dealing with long-term visa. So to be safer, I hired an agency to help me and uh, they helped me collecting all the material. They trained me on how to talk to the officers at the embassy. And even with this support, I still find the process a bit complicated. And because there's so many different kind of form, each has kind of weird names and that you have to prepare. And then uh, you have to make an appointment to have an in-person interview. And what was even worse, in China, American embassies are such a popular place. I don't know why. And uh, it's like you're going to a concert at 6 a.m. in the morning already so so many people lining up to go to the embassy so that was very exhausting but six weeks later I received my visa after I arrived in America things became much easier the only thing I needed to handle was my social security number uh, but for that you need to have a work contract first However, international students are not allowed to work over 20 hours a week and you can only take on-campus jobs such as teaching assistant or working at the school cafeteria. Uh, this is not really a friendly policy because in Australia and in Germany, students can take any kind of job as long as you don't work over 20 hours a week. However, you can also work full-time during school school breaks but anyway back to america with this work contract in hand you can finally go to the local office to apply for your social security number and then within a few days you will receive a piece of paper in a letter which has your number uh, printed on it and uh, if you want to take an internship you have to apply for opt uh, but most uh, american uh, university and college they have a special international student office uh, where you can find people to help you for all the paperwork so that's a actually very convenient service i wouldn't complain about that uh, so in general for my experience i would probably give uh, three stars for that now let's move on to germany and you know what germany is known for bureaucracy that's actually kind of true it took me more than a year, a year, to prepare all my uh, visa application uh, material. I'm not even exaggerating. And the problem is I lived in China and also in America. So Germany want to see the you know, verification of uh, every single experience I had. So in order to do that, I need to send my transcript to a third party agency, one in, in China and all my uh, American experience, then I sent to that in America after four or five months. And then they send this result back to me and I collect all this material and send them to another third party agency in Germany. It took them maybe another two, three months to verify everything. And they finally send this result to my uh, school in, in Germany. And then my school finally uh, can send me a letter and then with this letter, I went to the consulate thing in Boston. It took me another two months to finally get my German visa. Yes. And that's actually still not the end. After you arrive in Germany, there are even more things that you have to do. First, you need to register your address. If you don't do that, that's illegal. And also you cannot receive any letters in your mailbox. 
and second you need to apply for your tax number which means you need to take a trip personally to the uh, finance office and third you need to apply for your uh, resident permit after three months staying here for me i also need to show this uh, proof of financial support and uh, which means i need to open this block uh, bank account or spiel conto and they don't allow me to withdraw more than about 900 euro a month so the length of my resident permit depends on how much money i put into this bank account and uh, it's 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 a pretty crappy service also and they also charge a pretty high service fee but what can you do you have you, you have to do that and um, anyway, so all those three registration process I talked about, address, tax number, and resident permit, you have to do in person and with hard copy application forms and nothing digitalized. And then you have to do everything in German and then nobody in those office uh, speaks English or willing to speak English. And then you cannot make any appointment basically means you need to just go there and take a number and wait and I remember uh, when I first came here and went to this waiting room and saw people already pack up lunch and you know watching movies on the tablets uh, yeah I guess that's the uh, German way of life I totally understand the reason behind all this uh, bureaucracy but uh, it can be very frustrating, especially for a foreigner who just arrived in a new country. You know, this entire process is to make you really helpless. Um, so if I'm going to give a reading, I'm probably going to give 1.5 stars. Oh, sorry. <laughs> But it's this contrast that makes Australia look more like paradise. I received my student visa within 24 hours. So compared to six weeks for my American visa and over a year for my German visa, this is definitely lightning speed. So Australia has a very nice website listing all the immigration information, which is also available in so many different languages. And all you need to do is just to go online, open an account and fill out all the forms and submit those uh, electronically. And then, you know, within a day and you will receive your visa confirmation in your email mailbox. And uh, what is even better, Australia stopped issuing physical stickers, that kind of visa. So when you cross the border at the airport, you just show your passport and, and that's it. The officer there, they didn't ask me any questions. Instead, they say, welcome. So that was just uh, fantastic. And also after you arrive in, uh, in Australia, other kind of registration, you know, including tax number and the bank account and stuff like that, still the same process. You do it online and uh, then you'll receive it within a few days. They even have an app called MyGov. You can access all the government information or your registration information just within a few swipes. What's even more, Australia has TV network called SBS, which provides programs in different languages and uh, they evaluate even have um, ethnic business award or multicultural uh, media award that give prize to people who have immigration background but uh, made some contributions either business-wise or media-wise to Australia. And this year in January, I went to Adelaide for their Australian Day celebration and they had a parade which was just a showcase of the diverse communities living in that city with performances and activities, you know, different food trucks from different cultures. And as a foreigner, you just feel so accommodating and so welcomed in this society. So for this experience i would give at least four stars for that so thanks australian for being very friendly now it comes to the expenses for that i think america and australia are pretty much similar and uh, a big chunk of money there you're going to spend is definitely tuition which can be around thirty thousand dollars a year and another big expense is definitely rent both Boston and Sydney are pretty pricey. I remember in Boston, I spent $1,000 just for a room shared with the other two people. In Sydney, pretty much similar. Uh, but what's funny is you often see that, oh, hey, $300, you know, for the rent, that's not bad. But be careful, it's weekly price. Yeah, in Australia, they tend to list rent weekly. 
Expensive as the rent is, it's not difficult to find an apartment in both countries. In America, you can just go on Craigslist. Even though the site looks pretty uh, old-fashioned, it works. It has a lot of useful information. And in Australia, you can go on flatmate.com.org and uh, you will find an apartment within two weeks. Another big spending is perhaps insurance or anything medical related, which America is very notorious for. But as an international student, you can just use uh, affordable international student private insurance, which charges you only maybe $40 or $50 a month. But that doesn't mean anything because most insurance has deductibles, which means you have to pay a certain amount of money out of your pocket first within a year and after you spending that money, which can be 8,000 or 10,000 uh, for this year. And the insurance com company can finally come to cover your medical bill. Uh, even though they say they will cover 80%, 20% is still pretty pricey because everything medical related is expensive there. For example, a regular blood test can cost you $300 and uh, um, ambulance ride charges you at least uh, $1,000. I remember I had my uh, wisdom teeth, you know, taken out. It cost me $4,000. Australia is a little bit better, but if you're not Australian citizen, you cannot access to their public health care system, which means you need to still pay a lot out of your pocket. Uh, for any uh, doctor visit, you pay like 30 Australian dollars, and for a blood test, you pay $300 out of your pocket. And uh, even with those uh, insurance that I talked about, um, they don't really cover, you know, your chronic disease. You know, they only cover those accidental things. For example, you had a car crash, they probably can cover something. So if you decide to go to Australia or America, definitely try to be safe and don't get sick or that's gonna cost you a lot and then comes to transportation in boston you can buy charlie card to go on subways buses or ferries and you can buy this monthly ticket for $90 for unlimited rides. But as a student, you can also apply for a semester ticket. You pay uh, $400 for five months. So there's a little bit discounts over there. But bear in mind that the subway system in Boston is perhaps one of the oldest in the world. So you gotta have some patience. In Sydney, they have Opal Card. You can use it to access subways and light rails and buses or even ferries. Uh, as a student, you can also apply for a uh, concession rate. Depending on the time of the day, you know whether it's a peak hours or not, uh, you can have up to 6% off. So that's a pretty good uh, price over there. And then cell phone plans. I would say America and Australia, they both have pretty strong and fast network. And for the data plans, it's you know pretty affordable. But in America, it depends on how many lines are in the same account you know the more lines the cheaper it can be so for Verizon you spend uh, $70 a month for unlimited data and uh, $90 if you want to 5G but if you put more lines you know like as the family account, you can spend only $35 on limited data. So that's a huge difference. That's why I remember in America, I have so many classmates, they, you know, just became a family. It's, you know, they're not family, it's just a way to reduce uh, cost. And Australia is also very digitalized. So that's why the data plan is uh, quite affordable. I remember the lowest, lowest package I can find is 10 gig monthly. That's a lot of, lot of data if you're talking from European standard. Um, people use a lot of video streaming, you know, Instagram stories and TikTok stuff. And the price is also reasonable. So for that, you pay like 30 Australian dollars. So yeah, that's definitely a steal. And then grocery shopping, both Australian and American supermarkets are huge and offers a lot of, lot of products. And they also have sales going on very often. You see those 50% off or buy this, get that for free. And uh, you also have so many coupons attached to the bottom of your receipt that I find very interesting. In general, I will give both countries for the expensive part three stars.
Now let's talk about Germany. One thing to note that is that I live in Cologne, not in Munich. Munich is perhaps the most expensive city in Germany, which has 30 to 40 percent higher price than the rest of the country. But Cologne is much more affordable. That's why it's also known as a student town. So here as an international student, you can have so many benefits. First tuition is free you know compared to tens of thousands of dollars you spend in america or in australia here is definitely in paradise and then you can also have this semester ticket which costs you about 200 euro uh, for six months um, but with this even though it's just a piece of paper you can go on unlimited train ride bus rides, subway rides, and anything within the entire state, not just in one city. So that is just fabulous. Another great benefit here is medical care, which Europe is perhaps the best in the world. So as an international student, you pay about 80 to 90 euros a month, which covers almost everything. Uh, you don't need to pay anything for doctor visit, for regular examination. Uh, I actually had a little procedure which I also didn't pay anything. And a lot of uh, prescribed medicines are covered as well. Uh, so I remember uh, one time I went to the pharmacy, I gave uh, the people there my prescription and asked them how much that cost. And they said, oh no, it's already paid. It was such a great feeling just walking you know, out of the pharmacy without paying a penny. The rent here is also very affordable. I spent only 400 euro for a big room with my own balcony, my own kitchen. So compared to the American price, this is definitely a steal. However, it is extremely difficult to find an apartment here. Even though they do also have different websites such as Wikigazuch, however, after you send 100 requests, you probably only get 10 answers. And then when you go on, you know, check out the apartment, you ended up in a panel interview with 50 other candidates. It's very competitive to find only be able to sign the contract, not to mention somebody who don't really speak German well. So here's a very important tip is to hold on an apartment, don't let it go unless you move to another city. The mobile phone plan here is not pricey, but pretty outdated. So you spend about um, 15 euros for maybe three gigs a month. Um, and it's not fast and usually you will lose signals while you're riding on a train. To be honest, even though Germany is known to the world for their technology and engineering, the country itself is not as digitalized as the other developed countries. For example, the mobile network I talked about here is very slow and doesn't provide much data. And also here you have to carry cash all the time because credit card is not widely accepted, not to mention mobile payment, which basically doesn't exist here. So all my friends who visit me from other countries and they are shocked because they don't want to withdraw money from the ATM. However, you cannot use your credit card. So they have to do that, uh, which is just, you know, really not convenient. But in general, I would give at least four stars for the uh, living expense here, especially the all the benefits to the students. Thank you, Germany. Now the best part, lifestyle. All of the three countries have a lot to offer and a lot of activities you can do during your free time. In America, the food scene is just amazing. You can have authentic Chinese food in Chinatowns and great Italian food in Little Italy, uh, not to mention the Tex-Mex food, you know, the best taco and burrito you can imagine. The portion is huge. To give you a very simple example, at the Starbucks in America, the smallest size is tall which is actually the medium size in Europe. Besides food, Boston also has quite good Irish pubs and a huge St. Patrick's Day celebration because I was told that was the only day that you're kind of allowed to drink something on the street. On the other days, you have to cover your drinks with a black paper bag and uh, whenever you go to a liquor store, you have to show your ID to show that you're over 21, which Americans are very strict about. And also pubs and clubs all need to be closed at 2 a.m. Uh, so if you're a party animal, make sure that you already start partying at 10 p.m. Australia is quite similar to America in terms of diversity, but has even more Asian influence. 
uh, because it has a large Asian population here and also its location is quite close to Asia as well. So here you can take a trip to Southeast Asia very easily for a vacation, which is like how easy it is in America to travel to the Caribbean. And uh, but the Asian food here in Australia is even more authentic. What I noticed is that a lot of popular restaurant chain in Asia, they tend to open a branch in Sydney. So there you can actually enjoy the, uh, the restaurant that are currently also very popular in the Asian countries, which are modern and creative and also authentic, which is not like those old you know chinatown kind of uh, restaurant that serve westernized asian food and every friday night there's a night market in the chinatown in sydney where you can find the different kinds of street food and bubble teas and snacks so if you're a student from east asia i don't think you will be feeling homesick at all now it comes to Germany. It is also very diverse here, but it has a more Middle Eastern and African influence. Uh, what's interesting is, so whenever my friends visit me from other countries, I will take them, of course, to the German restaurant to have pork knuckle first. And then I will take them to the most popular restaurant here, which is called Kebab Land. Uh, they have very good kebab and spicy bread. So here you will also find, you know, dinner shops everywhere, a lot of Turkish markets markets and bakeries, um, which I personally actually find very, uh, very exotic and nice. As for the pop scene, because the student town, so it's really carefree and even alternative. Here you often see a bar full of graffitis or a music venue made out of a trash yard. And the party here tend to start very late, usually from 1 a.m. all the way to next morning. And here you're free to drink, free to smoke. So that means Saturday morning can be super smelly and messy. Uh, but anyway, if you ever have a chance to come to Cologne, you definitely should uh, inspire their carnival and also the summer fair and they have people dressed up uh, in different costumes and all the rides and all the food stands so it's such an uh, exciting experience that you cannot miss another great thing here in Germany is you can easily travel to other countries and the flight ticket here is very very cheap I can fly to London for only 15 euro and within an hour I'll be there and uh, of course also Europe it has a long history. You can find uh, those fairy tale like uh, century old um, mansions and uh, castles or churches, and you learn a lot from that. To sum up, I'm going to give four stars to all the three countries. In America, you can find fascinating landscape and experience a more Latino influenced culture. And in Australia, you can try those exciting water sports and try some uh, Asian influenced food. And and here in Germany, you can travel to other European countries easily and to learn about their history and arts. So each country provides a unique experience. It's up to you which you want to explore the most. Last but not the least, safety. People tend to be influenced by media a lot. When they see uh, news about gunshot in America, they tend to think, wow, it's really dangerous to live there. Well, at least from my own experience, there was not a single incident that happened during my six year in Boston. I actually, I left my wallet two times on the public transportation in Boston, but both of the time, uh, people return the wallet to me without a penny lost. For that, I feel super grateful. But of course, every single city has dangerous area. So you need to be a, a vigilant and uh, try to avoid those areas. And uh, you should be fine. Here in Germany also, the city centers and train station areas is not quite safe. My pocket got snatched twice. And one time I was walking back home, there was a strange guy following me and I had to kick him and run back home that was very very scary every single year there are stabbing cases here when you find the entire block in lockdown because some gangster killed someone and that was really crazy so for that i give america three stars and also germany only three stars 
Australia is indeed quite safe, at least from my one year experience over there. I feel safe almost all the time, except for the New Year's Eve, uh, when they have this spectacular firework display and tens of thousands of people uh, were on the street and you see policemen everywhere too. Uh, but that was only just one night after that, everything back to normal. Um, so, but of course, you know, this year, uh, Sydney had this bushfire, which is pretty dangerous dangerous but however it's not something like a terrorist attack or you know stabbing or gunshot so for that I give Australia four stars so this is my comparison video of my study experience in America Germany and Australia thanks for watching I hope you found the information helpful and please let me know which country you like the best and if you have any questions feel free to comment down below and I will try to answer you as soon as possible so till my next video please stay safe and sound and uh, see you soon